You're welcome. Ready? All right, we're going to call the meeting to order at 8.07, um, and we'll start with roll call. Michael Niven. Here. Andrew Grove. Here. Stacey Hill. Hill, here. Tom Langston. Here. Shirley McElhatton. Here. Kristen Reisinger. Uh, Carrie Wrestler. Amanda Ross. Here. Shelly Saba. Ian Smith. We know he's there. He's there. I see yeah. him there. There he is. Thank you, Ian. And uh, Stefan Strautmeyer. Okay, we have a quorum with six and we have an extra, so we have seven. Very good for us. Um, are there any citizens' comments? I see none online and none present. Okay. Next up is approving the minutes from the last meeting on April 13th that are attached in your packet. Do I leave a motion to approve? Motion to approve and a second. Second. Um, first up is the commissioner's report. Sure. Um, so at last commission meeting, which was almost two weeks ago, the commission approved the construction for new pickleball courts at Meadowcroft Park. Um, that will, that work will start this summer during when school is out. So we're very excited that we'll convert the two tennis courts into six courts, right, David? Wow. Six football courts. Um, I see that it's on the agenda as I am number 11. Do you want to go into more detail about it in yes. number 11? Yes, okay. Please. So then I'll just keep it at that. Um, on this week's agenda, which is next Tuesday, we're going to be having a public discussion on brick streets. For the last three years, the commission has been working on a brick streets policy that's to preserve at least some of our brick streets. Previously, we have not had any, um, let's see, let's say financial incentive or actual policy to preserve brick streets. Some of our brick streets are 60, 80, even 100 years old, and they're reaching the end of their useful life when they need to be completely reconstructed. They can't be repaired anymore as bricks. They've been turned into asphalt streets. Um, we have found through this process over the last 20 years that most residents don't like that and like their brick streets. That's why they moved to that. But it does move to that specific street. But it does cost a lot more to maintain brick streets. Um, probably a factor of three, depending on the life cycle time that you're looking at, 30 years, 60 years, 100 years. But something rough around there. So where's that money going to come from? Is it worth it? You probably saw maybe about a year and a half ago, there was a Brick Street survey and residents resoundingly, like almost 90% said that they're willing to, they not only like Brick Streets, but they're willing to pay some amount more to preserve Brick Streets. So that puts some meat behind the commission and staff and the Historic Preservation Board to continue to work on, well, how, which Brick Streets? How do we, where do we find this money? What do we, you know, how is this going to work? And we're, we're making a lot of progress and we're going to have some tough decisions and discussions next Tuesday on what streets will be preserved and what won't necessarily be preserved when they reach the end of their useful life. It's not going to happen tomorrow or even in the next five years necessarily, but when those streets are, are no longer drivable. Um, and those determinations will be made on the slope, you know, the grade of that street, but also the proximity to other brick streets the historic district, whether that street resides in the historic district, or maybe is should be qualified to be in the historic district because there's lots of historic homes that match the brick architecture, that match the brick, whether it's architecture or have a stone architecture that's similar and things like that. So I'd like to tune in. Um, those are a couple big ones. The other couple things I have kind of fit into some of the other stuff, so I'm gonna, I'll pass it on over. All right, so next up is probably something that you all yep. have is advisory board restructuring transition planning, a long title. So last week we asked for someone to take the lead. Uh, David said that he would take the lead and start to put stuff online. Did everyone get a link? I know I got a link to. I don't know that I got a link. So I don't know that's that okay. okay, I'll send it over to David. I wasn't that okay. yeah. So I, I sent everybody something in the chat. And asked, I said, I remind you about the meeting tonight. And I said, respond if you got this. I don't think anybody responded. Yeah, I don't think I got it. So if you have a, if the team's at, so make sure you go to the Sports Advisory Board channel and make sure you um, get notifications for that. From on the team's app. Yes. Okay, and if you set your notifications so that it, you know, notifies you when there's new activity in there, hopefully you get it. 
Um, the other thing I did is I started putting some documents in there. Um, the uh, uh, Sports Advisory Board project priority list, the updated one from the last meeting, I put that in there. I'm going to start loading more stuff in there, but I want to make sure everybody gets it. Um, I'll do another message next week, and I'll try to like at mention everybody. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if it will, I, I guess it would take more than one email. Some folks have more than one email for the Sports Advisory Board, so I try to use the one that I think you respond to most. So if there's another email or you want to check that I have the correct email, just send me an email and I'll make sure I have that entered in the team. Um, so hopefully everybody starts getting notifications and we can start to dive in there and get a little bit more productive. So what's the idea with this team thing and what we're posting? To, um, well, it's going to start a repository for what the Sports Advisory Board has done historically okay. and what we can continue to do, you know, what we should continue to do moving forward. And then we all should dump information in over the summer. Okay. Just email each other, remind, yeah. Yeah, so in the packets last week when right. we weren't here, there's that document that talks about the transition. Yeah, I forgot okay. you weren't here. I was yeah. so, so look at that, that document, and it's a it's a doozy. Oh. It took me a couple uh, times through, and there's a video even to help you, help you understand it. So I did the video, read it a couple times, and I think I get it now. Um, so anyway, it's going to be things like, um, what is our annual work plan? Um, what are the current projects that the board is working on? All of these things aimed at, you know, kind of not losing progress of everything that's being done now to, and transition that over to the new parks and rec board. Okay. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay. So the, that was the big task that we're given, that all the boards are mm -hmm. given, document everything. Um, that you've done. Everything that you've done historically, and then what do you want to make sure continues to happen? Move yeah, like forward. annual processes. We're not going like to document every single accomplishment or anything. You're just kind of giving them the template for what kinds of work gets done here and so that we don't lose that in the transition. of And like recreation, you know, CIP rankings, things like that, I'm assuming we're going to want to be moving forward. Yeah, but um, that is the first document in there. And David, the first when you say they, who is this for? What's the, I mean, I know we're all putting it in, parks putting it in, sports are putting it in. For the new board for exactly. the new so sports and rec board. And which, hopefully that's at least a few of you. Yes. Right. So I can talk about that. I, I don't know who else wasn't here last week besides Amanda. I don't want to be super redundant. Um, <laughs> so that's okay. No, no, no. For, the, for our large audience, we might want to repeat it, you know, because they're paying attention. Um, so the sports advisory board has a couple people whose terms are not expiring and that will be qualified to move into the new board, which is Parks and Rec. Um, I think that the qualifications will really just be you come to meetings, something kind of basic like that. And if people haven't been showing up for at least half of the meetings, then maybe they won't be asked, but everybody else will be asked to move over. That includes Michael Divin, Andrew Brobe, Tom Langston, Shelly Saba, and Stefan Strottmeyer. One, two, three, four, five folks, because your term doesn't expire until 2025. Um, you don't have to obviously decide to join us next year on April 1st. That's the date that the new board is active and our, our current boards retire. But we hope that at least most of you do so there's some continuity. Right. From Quarks, there's only Kelly, um, I believe. And so there'll be a few open spots. There's nine total spots for every board. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four. If all five, six people who qualify do move over, then there's only be three spots and we'd probably skew that towards people with more parks experience given the nature of the board. And that again is really just to have continuity. And then there'll be more positions open every year as other people roll off. Um, that's my high level. <laughs> I'm happy to quite, yeah. I would say, and we haven't really had a chance to talk about this with me, that it, one of the things coming out of the field census is the idea of having a separate um board if you will yes. for all the sports youth yeah, sports boarding. organizations separate entities separate entity, starting with fields but also possibly including everybody um and then focusing kind of on fields so when i think of that i think that a person from that board should be, a liaison. Should be on the parks and rec board 
as a field, let's instead of all the individual sports, call it like a field representative. And then the other positions, in my opinion, at least, should be should be tennis. Minutes, it should be right? the recreational okay. things that the municipality owns: the golf, tennis, paddle, however you want to. The facilities, at, uh, maybe hockey, or I guess the ice rink yeah, or something, definitely. might fit into that swimming. The, 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 so that you're representing the things that are, I think one person can handle all the field stuff yeah. coming out of that separate youth organization. And then the other ones could be representing the recreational components of the township, which would be the pool, the paddle, the hockey So, so you've got re revenue generating aspects of the township, which would be tennis, pool, golf, whatever else. And then you have this youth sports. That's, yeah, the non revenue right generating, which maybe you look at it that way. It's it is representation of community activities, community representation for the use of those. For all the youth sports, you were thinking liaison, and you that that sport can pick a person, and that person can rotate through, and right. maybe there'll be four meetings a well, year. There's a board. If there's a board of that, whoever is the president yeah. of that board from whatever sport that happens to be at that given time, exactly. I would think would make it be a good fit for. Sure. Also serving on the rec parks and rec board as a board member, a voting board member, I would think, because and they would represent all the youth sports field programs. So that would be baseball, softball, lacrosse, the soccer, football. Person. Yeah, so like the that they would represent sort of because like right now you have multiple people here representing a sport that is played on a field, right? And I'm saying roll that into one person. Oh, you're saying the field, like a field, youth board field, right? So person. like he's softball, I'm playing football, right. Shelley's soccer. All those could be represented by one person because we have our own board that's feeding that one person what we want to. I, yeah, I want to start working on creating that authority board right. entity. And, and that's one of the main just, things yeah. coming out of the field thing that yeah. hopefully we'll get through. I think the other thing to throw right in that too, and it would involve cooperating, which I think we would with the school district, is maybe there's a liaison that represents the school district. Person. So you'd have so, someone that works with the school. So it wouldn't be an employee, but it would be you know, someone that would be. It's in, the, voicing, it's in the plan. Yeah, voicing the, the school district's position on things as well yeah. as. Um, well, not that like Jeff Kaiser wants one more thing to do. Well, but, like, maybe it's a citizen. It could be a citizen. It could be, it, citizen citizen it could be somebody. Yeah. It needs to be somebody who understands the, or so, yes. so, yeah. the facilities that are available with the township and what right. that. Yeah. yeah, it's on yeah. that. Um, yeah, absolutely. The liaison from the school district is invited. The, the in issue, if you think about the issues that have come up over time, the usage, the maintenance, the bathrooms the yep. you know all those things you're looking for more of like a facility we've tried we, we they're always welcome right but we've tried to incorporate representation of the school district in these meetings and it's been probably what twice in the two years that we've been doing this that someone's going to kind of get like shelly saba as a cross thing right. Stefan was just on the school board so yeah. he has a lot of background knowledge so you get people who know right but i think if you had an intentional like person that was the liaison to the district would be we talk about it. 13 of the fields we play on are owned by school districts. Yeah, that's what we're inviting, or you know, mm -hmm. someone from the school district. But I think as we consolidate into one, you can take a big chunk of the of the, that out by having all the field sports represented by one person. I agree. And then focus on that because I mean, even in this board, tennis and golf have a totally sort of different viewpoint than the rest of us because they're they have their own facility and it's very specific. So doing. because the entity isn't created yet, and I want to help make that happen offline as right. possible, but if it's not created by, you know, April 1st when this, this thing goes alive, is there anyone like maybe Tom Langston who could best like represent that person? person. To be that person and to be the start being the person first to represent the field. Like, you know, someone is someone already rolling over that can play that role. Shelly or Tom, I was listening to the people you Yeah, Michael Divin, Andrew Grove, Tom Langston, Shelly Saba, and Stephanie. And I think one of the things that comes to mind. those are at general, you're a paddle. Like, I think one of the things that comes to mind in that board, and I think from the structure standpoint, is we merge with parks. Which I don't, I think David in this group, my experience is no one has been heavy handed with a particular sport no, in any of the conversations we've ever had. It's always been for the betterment of the community. And I think as we look at the parks and recreation merger, having that mentality where you represent fields on behalf of all sports outside of the room, you're coming in to represent all sports individually as a, I mean, as a group as opposed to individual, I think that maintains a lot of health to that group. So the last thing you want to do is have someone that comes into that 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 board that's heavily handed towards one particular sport, and it'll change it'll change the entire 
makeup of those meetings and that structure. And I think it should apply to the parks the same way. I think that role has to be 50,000 feet for the betterment of the community, not for the betterment of a sport or an activity or specific park. Specific anything. Right. Right. Good point. Yeah. Sir, as field we'll we'll have something going with it, that separate yeah. and state yeah. will start that process. That's a great idea. The um, applications for that will be due in January or maybe February 1st. So if there's that's that's probably the real deadline. So we that. have Tom. <laughs> and then for anyone else who wants to reapply, don't be discouraged that there's too many sports people already. Um, I don't, you know, I never well, we know. We may want to reach out like. strategically too to like hockey for somebody from the ice rink. That would be a good fit if we're yeah. gonna have tennis and and golf. And the golf is now not are they still? Um, they're gone. Golf. But they, they're, they're, they're not on the board. Yeah, so they they recently have, expressed interest. Yeah, I would say golf and mm. hockey. Okay. I would target the sort of the non-field people because we know we can get them represented. Well, I mean, if you think about the breadth of programs, I mean, you could say you want someone who like participates in day camp or you know yeah. all of our youth programs right. or watch you guys someone in exercise <laughs> classes or you know. Art or programming type person. Someone with maybe kids and maybe right. a bunch. I don't know if they have time, if they have a bunch of kids, but you know what I mean. Someone familiar with a lot of our different programs. Yeah, a programming component would be interesting as well. Well, I mean, because that's, if you think about the name of the board, that implies that there's going to be a lot. And we've never had that. Yeah. Ever. Right. Ever. So, when I think that. To, to, to get representation from all the different voices that need to be heard. I just think about the times I've heard, like Lynn talk about the golf course. Like I don't go to the golf course. Sure. I don't know anything about the golf course. Yeah. I can tell you anything about any field, but that's an important perspective. It's an important asset to the community that she knows what needs to replace there and how important it is and how long they've been waiting and all of that history that yeah. you would need to have for all the different. Not, not to add to that. Oh, oh, I know. Okay, you can jump in. The parks board has on their task list and they're going to try to continue it moving forward in the new board their task every parks board member is supposed to visit every single park and i think we have 13 so maybe the sports this you know the sports members visit every facility get input have a one-on-one -on -one with lynn invite her to a meeting and make sure at least once a year right. we, we have really good bocce input or whatever it is yeah. <laughs> i know i know i know i'll add to that i know it's my thought is a, a lot of the other facility type Boards would do a pre and post season inspection. So Ooh, they would yeah. come in and say, you know, preseason, this is what we see, this is what we want. And then postseason, this is so it kind of sets that stage. And maybe we look at that as a pre fall, end of fall, pre spring, end of spring type. And the public works crew find that very helpful, that right. list. You know, it's just extra eyes out there finding things. Good thoughts. So it'll be in the minutes, and then we have to move it to our transition document. So we also just don't forget about it in two or three years or whatever it is, um, in addition to working on it. That makes sense to me. Yeah. All right, we'll move on then to standardized field signage. Hey, so good news. I think in the I don't, then I'll stop talking. In the last meeting, um, Amanda that you missed called on the minutes that it was over okay. budget. They came back. Um, yes, Colano Design came back with a response of twenty seven thousand dollars. But to be fair, they were giving us a lot more than we also asked for. So the municipality went back and forth with them and changed the scope and just said, "Look, we just need a design guide for a part, the main park sign and the main field signs." That's what we want from you to get started. And they agreed. And so it's eleven thousand dollars and we green lighted it, improved it, and they're starting. We're good. That's not we, for the science, that's just to design the that's just document. the design the document. actually make them design the guideline. But that will allow us to basically break them out. Done, right? Okay. It's not approved. Check the tone. That's right. It's some really nice signs. So it's, 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 like, it's like it's like when you win the 50-50 right anywhere. You just take your 50 and reinvest <laughs> it back in. So if I were right. to get eleven thousand for the rights, that I'll reinvest it there back into the We've already yeah, it's already gone to <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> um, but and it is in your packet, but progress. Uh, 
proposal. It's on the very last page. Big step. Yeah, so we gave you the proposal so that everyone knows what we agreed to and what's okay. moving forward. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so you can read through this one. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to start manufacturing them. I'm hoping this year and get some of the fields, get the field signs made and the park signs made. And then we can talk about all the rest of the signs that didn't get included in the scope. And I don't know if we'll need a design guideline for that. It might be something we can create based on the design guideline they gave us in the first place, you know. But I'd be happy to actually see some physical signs up. So this is the We just had a confusion the other night over where was, what was upper practice field and this middle field. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're going to task you with. Well, it doesn't help that Google Maps calls it Wildcat. The upper practice mm -hmm. field, if you look at Google Maps, it's called Wildcat. It's not, but okay. that's what Google Maps does. Oh, let me try to check maps. I have written to them already did. five times. Um, I can, I'll write my comments. Say, this is not nice correct school. over so and over. Know. It's not getting corrected. Is that the high school? They shouldn't call it the wrong time. Is there a way to like... Talk to the school district. That's their. You know, I don't think they want it called that. If we've talked, so stay tuned. I think there's some conversation around. There's some restrictions around naming. That's probably more complex than the just, wow. You're lying. Come on, we had two years. Sorry, I'm getting off track, but that's Skyway. Come on, you don't have a Skyway name. They do now. Oh, but, oh, but we yeah. They so named the Skyway I, after I'm so I think there's potential there. There's You're saying you mean McFeely. McFeely. You keep saying McNeil. Yeah. I was getting very yeah. confused. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think there's a, and it could go back to that liaison. I think there is an open mind to the concept of naming it. Um, but there's some complexity to it. We can talk. In the that. end, we need to name it after a person or something. So it's not at the upper practice field or the wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could do better. Yeah. On the I like it. It's such a field. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, right? throw that one there. Because people in Mount Lebanon no, understand that. Probably but people first come first thing publicly understand that. So exactly on that, before we can manufacture any signs, we're going to need to agree exactly what the name is, like oh, what cool. the, for all every single field, field. Yeah. Yeah. little bird yeah. park yeah. fields. Yeah. Are we calling right. John so we, Doctor we, Field? No, no one. Yeah. I don't know that. We um, need a name. That's its that's official, official, official name. So there, and I think what we did in that At package, park. there are ways to. I don't know about that. There was some. There, I think there are ways to to. We talked about some different way finding things that may be a little bit more advanced in the first round, but. Um, yeah, so that, I don't want that to hold us up. So maybe we want to work on that this summer offline and so, kind of put yeah, some one of the things we, we, As an example, uh -huh. Seymour, Flint Seymour Field, they have, there's a sign there that is very small and it explains in detail the significance of Clint and the family. Okay. I think a part of that would be to go back and say, do we have the permission to redo that in a really nice manner mm -hmm. that we can put that there for all these fields and what's like Martha the, uh, Dixon Field, Martha Dixon. Mm -hmm. There's a, a there's great a, story. You know, be up the, so there's a, there's a marker there, but to do that in any naming thing, we could do that aspect to give the, the respect to the name of it, but then also have what people designate it as. Also, if whatever you end up naming them, when you come time at the field meeting to divvy up the fields, we need to change the language in that meeting. So we're all using yeah, the same, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And when we put in our team snap or wherever for communicating with other townships right. about where we're playing, we're all using the same terminology and it matches the sign. That's yeah. the key. What would be helpful? Anything the sports can do? Um, like a recommendation? Like someone could start a draft? Well, I think sure. once we start doing the signs, that's um, we it's should go with whatever, whatever the official name is. is. Like, Rafferton Park, I I tried forever to get people to call it Sunset Hills Park because that's what it officially is. Mm -hmm. But no one knew what I was talking about. So I eventually just gave up and I just keep calling it Rafferton. It's like Rafferton Field at Sunset well, Hills it's, Park. And Rafferton Field, as far as I know, isn't even an official name of anything. It's Sunset Hills Park. That's the name of the park. Yeah. Um, but people know it as Rafferton. It's always Brafferton. So that's, I just quit fighting it and said, yep, Brafferton. Yeah. <laughs>
that's the kind of thing we got to change to work through. Pick, pick it and pick what pick the name one. is. And so, then what's the time it. frame on the calendar thing? We have that in a month. Is it a week of weeks? They're starting it now, okay. and they said that Maybe they'll. More than? Um, they or need they need us to go through to design approval processes, and so it's just how quickly the municipality can right. approve and how much feedback we have. They said that they it's taken a month and it's taken a year. So it depends on us how long we can approve things. We don't have a lot of strong opinions, so I would expect it to be done in the summer, end of the summer for sure. So we should have, you know, we should. I, we, I would like to start to request money for manufacturing this year, like August, right. if not definitely in the budget season, which is October, November. So as long as everything's right. squared away, and right. we're not fighting over, not that we're fighting, but we're not, trying to figure out names because that'll just right. throw us all throw it all back. So I would say like now the next couple months this summer would be really great to figure out what we're going to call it moving forward. And if you want to do you want me to do you want me to go ahead and pull we have that we, we I can pull the official name and I can pull known as yeah and let's send it to David and, and we'll figure out what and we yeah. can do nicknames and other things as well that what people refer to it as that sound helpful, David? Well, well that's yeah. interesting. Is there any signs on the anywhere near there? There is a, a, a like a marker that says John Dr. Field yeah. down at the field level. Down at the field level. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's many times. Isn't there like a plaque? There's, there's a rock oh, okay. there's also one at the top, but it's very it's old and okay. it's it's not really no idea. Much. So I mean I think there really isn't um I don't think we decide, I think we just it's the official name, and that, that's what you have to go with. I mean, what right. else is there? So Sunset Hills uh, is going to be... But can you say, like, Brafferton Field at Sunset Hills? I think, or yeah, but I think that's, that's one I'd like to research just a tad to see if that's truly its name. Um, I don't think it is. I, I don't know that that field has a name. Maybe we can sell the naming rights on that. And There you go. Some signs. More than signs. <laughs> well, sure. It's fun a lot more than signs. Or something. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. No, for Braverton improvements. <laughs> there you go. Good. Thank you for moving that forward. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for all your hard work. We're doing it. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. Okay. Conference of Plan Advisory Group. Uh, that was so, me. So we had a, a meeting last week, I think. Board specifically, it wasn't much. Um, it's a lot about like moving Mount Lebanon forward in general. Um, the ground, again, the consensus is that parks and sports are a big part of that, but there wasn't really any details like field usage things. Um, I again expressed that's their biggest concern of this board is field usage. Um, they did bring up the controversy of the people watching on the sidewalk. Um, that was a, a topic, again, not really discussed as any solution, but it was discussed as a topic. So not really anything of a, you know, groundbreaking. Parks and Rec came out as a, one of the number one things from the survey. Right? Yeah, most people, people want, yeah, most more people. More maintenance, more improvements. Uh, just, I think, you know, highest usage, most comments. Uh, dog parks were a, a big topic of discussion, um, whether you have one or not. So, and where would you put it? So, I think that's like they're taking a lot of information from the public surveys, just yeah. trying to analyze it as to what people want in Mount Lebanon. But everyone kind of recognizes that they've been a part of youth sports, they've gone to a park, they use a park daily, things like that. So, I think that what I'm getting from it, you know. The, the majority of people would have no problem putting funding towards parks. That's what I was getting from the survey yeah. results that I saw so far in the summary. But like I said, I think the a couple of things that they're pulling out of it is dog parks and sidewalks and you know. sidewalks were the next biggest yeah. thing. It was safe pedestrian walkways, was, you know, including crosswalks and sidewalks. And the parking garage was another thing. It's like one of the bigger things that the township owns that it's going to have to we either go into renovations or could be made into something that's not a parking garage for funding or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And dog parks, I think it was the results that everyone said that they like a dog park not in their neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I find the healing is a great thing. Like far away, they don't want their neighborhood park taken by dogs. Dog park and some trails. <laughs> be a good 
So, okay. Then we'll move on to the temporary lighting plan at the practice field that hasn't gone anywhere. No, so um, my words, I think the superintendent change is a big indication of that with the new superintendent being, I guess, recently named in the last day or so. Um, I think that that's a push. To, I think it's just to let the new administration address that. But okay, so they're kind of busy. Continuous, basically. continued, yeah. continued support, high level of interest. Okay. Looking at permanent versus temporary. We can add um, a slide too in the field census report that talks about the pricing component of right. that with the and, number and of hours. In the last meeting, we talked about that. I yeah. met with Ron Davis and, and John Grogan, and they are desirous of us putting together a document that actually shows what increased utilization would be and, and where that dollar, like what would be the recommendation of a dollar value um, for fields. And, and then obviously coordinating that with township fields to make sure, for example, Seymour Middle would be the same price as the upper rock or the upper yeah. rock or the upper practice field. So they're not encouraging a particular right. use over another. Um, standardizing those surfaces was, was, was highly uh, favorable. And then what is the what is the in, what is the right number for the stadium facility yeah. based on what the individual needs? Curve. Right, curve. just the turf with lights, with bathrooms, with all the things that go along with it. Um, there is also, and I didn't really get into a lot of details. There are some um, um, potential labor challenges with some contracts as far as what has to happen in the state because it's it's run by the school district oh, with yeah. the union um, to make sure that um, if certain things are used that someone has to be on the premises. So I think that was one of the other things that they were trying to determine. Um, if it's just practice, then there's no, but if something to open or accessible, it has to have an employee. Yeah, what level of usage triggers that need for that, for yeah. the cleanup or for somebody, the monitoring? Yeah. So it needs to be simplified. There are menu, you know, correct. you talked about so, that, like uh, the menu of choices. So everybody understands, like, you want to do this one, it's another 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever it is. Do you want lights? You want a bathroom? You want correct. whatever. So all of that was. Uh, Highly supportive, highly liked. Um, the lights, I mean, all of, the light, all of it's all conversation. I think it's, my gut feeling is it's not going to happen until the new superintendent comes in. And so and we're, you were looking at temporary lights, but then also maybe permanent lights. So we suggested the temporary right? option. I think it, it raised a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Is it gas? Is it diesel? Is it yeah. gasoline uh, or natural gas, diesel, gasoline? Um, how is it controlled? How is it started? How is it shut off? When are the, I mean, all those things came into the conversation. Um, with the temporary, you'd only be able to put them on one, you'd only be able to put them on the parking lot side. Mm -hmm. um, if you used uh, a permanent light towers, you could put them on the three sides of the field, uh, on the mm -hmm. uh, two ends in the parking lot side. And um, that would be the best, least amount of light, I mean, least amount of footprint in the most amount of light. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, the, the cost for the installation and lighting was, I think, beyond, was shockingly reasonable. And, the, and as I understand, the conduit is pulled to the field. So it's it's not a massive project. So they do have some conduit to the field, but the not The conduit anything. is to the field, but it's not to the towers. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah so, right. So, but I think I think what will happen there, Mindy, is if we're able to put together this analysis that shows increase of usual and, and there's no point in doing that until the new superintendent right. is in it. Right. But it's it's going to be a return on investment issue for them to say yes, we're, we we want to. So you're looking at predominantly the upper practice field, rock pile, both stadium as well as a part. It's not a part of the lighting, but it's a part of the conversation. Yeah. What about lights at Cedar, the other side? That is, I think, the plan for when that is ready okay. to be returned. Yeah, that's going to be in your back. That's going to be there. Oh, well, wait, and that's on. The, I mean, that's, I think, not assumed because nothing is yeah. guaranteed, but I think we're all, everyone's Part of in that agreement project. that that's going to happen. I mean, there was, yeah. you know, the conversation in that, you just kind of throw it mud when, what happens if we let Jefferson, the Oval of Jefferson? Right, what happens if that's we my let, expression. Like, that's where these, what happens if we let Mellon? Yeah. Um, the chart we so, have that shows, I have a nice chart that shows you know, assuming till 10 o'clock in the fall and the spring, how many hours you pick up total nice. from per field. So any field you light, you get X number of hours more. 
So we have some really good data to show that, and that's just looking at when the sun sets. Yeah. Um, that but what what you could get out of that. The biggest challenge as we talk about this is you've got school districts saying we're going to invest in a surface that has limited benefit to the school district, but has a massive benefit to the community. And you're going to have an opposing view from a school district, someone that sits on the, the school board, say, why are we going to spend a million dollars for middle school to have a turf when 90% of the turf is used by Right. Use, use that's board. another argument we could make because we have the data to show that. Right. See, I believe that if they lit the upper practice field, you sports would see very little of that. High school would take that over right. and they wouldn't because they've got people all over the place. Right. They've got middle school practicing right. at that's, Art Park. That, got, that's what I would answer that. They, they've got, got, they've got, got that that season fields. sports they're that would not love not to be there right. but right. they get pushed to nighttime. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think they will suck up that upper practice For field sure. super And we fast. can flip that right back on that. Look at how much of your youth sports are needing to yeah. use. So so I, don't, so I don't buy that. No, but I think that that's that that was that's the initial conversation of is, hey, we need to understand why. Maybe a Jefferson or Mellon after six o'clock, the youth sports organization might see if those two fields were turfed, but that practice field thing it, it, you might get one week once or twice a week but that's it i think the high school because they, they're in the same situation all the youth sports are in too many they keep adding sports and they don't add fields they have rugby they have that's right women's rugby yeah, they have, uh, um, My friend. the ultimate frisbee they added two middle school soccer teams yep they've done a lot but they don't frisbee. they don't have the fields yeah so. right so but Happy to report they're they're open minded they're supportive of it I think we just have to kind of come together and share the data and and the you know I can't speak for the entire municipality but the commission especially the commissioners I've talked to are very very supportive of working with the school district even from a funding perspective and helping maintain let's talk about how to you know cost share that or whatever like open open sure. not saying we said we will <laughs> and don't interpret that means we'll pay for turf it's a turfing of Jefferson but. Very, very old thing. That's good. Okay. Main park site plan and recreation center architectural study, an even longer title. Mm -hmm. I think that's stalled. You know anything about that? I do know something. Awesome. About that. Um, Ian uh, McMeans, not Ian Smith, Ian McMeans and Commissioner Swagger Wilson wrote a draft RFP that was shared with the project team just today, um, just this afternoon. And uh, feedback is due on Monday. So it's we're really, I guess things are picking up fast. <laughs> and we're going to meet sometime next week to review that feedback and, and get that uh, RFP moving. So that's what I know. Nice. The Brafferton Field Project update. I'm there three times a week. You'd think I'd know what's happening. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, Gateway is working on the specs. Um, <laughs> I do have plans. I was going to put them in your packets, but they they were too big. They wouldn't uh, they wouldn't send too much data. I could throw them up if you guys want to look at them. They're not really uh, very exciting, but um, you know it's going to be a a box. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'll do that. It'll take me just a sec to to join the meeting and and do that and share my screen. But you guys can start asking me questions or something if you would like in the meantime. Did they, I didn't haven't paid attention when I'm there. Did they fill in the infill with grass? Uh, yes. Grass? Yeah, they they did that. I think it needs it, it probably needed another uh, overseeding and stuff. But it is it is in the process. Of I feel like they use they kind of they don't they avoid that part of the field. They don't use, they kind of use the outfield still the old outfield when they're, or at least the cross does when they're there. It's not fully grounded. I mean, basically, it's addressing what we expected it to the way it's um, described in the uh, CIP. Recording in progress. That sounds good. <laughs> okay. That's better. All right, um, I think I have to promote me to um, oops. righty, bear with me. Mm. 
Here we go. All right. Um, this should be pulling up here momentarily. Okay, so here's our exciting uh, plan view of the improvements. Um, maybe I can just make these a little bigger. Mm -hmm. so we can go in on some of these comments. Um, so basically, one of the the bigger parts of this plan as we discussed is grassing over the infield. So that'll just be enhanced. Um, it does say in the notation here that it is already overseeded, I believe, yeah. The, oh, the, uh, and the backstop was also removed. Um, so they'll, they'll continue to oversee that, but they're also gonna pull this existing fence, which is now just at the top of the slope and kind of falling over the hillside that is gonna be pulled back. Um, so my main comment, it says 10 feet, would be to, to go the minimum, you know, that's required to get that fence shored up. Um, so we preserve as much playable uh, space as possible. Um, they will <clears throat> rebuild or replace fencing as needed along the basketball court side. And uh, we will be addressing the drainage. We had a better picture here. Now, at one point, they were talking about putting some parking down on the field. That's not part of this. That's not part project. of this. But uh, is, this, is yeah. that something we need to think about if they're going to put drains where parking is going to be? No, no. It, this is going to be, this is, this should not be disturbed by any other um, development in the park. I mean, if you maintain this field, that's where all this is going to stay. Okay. So this wouldn't, uh, parking. We're not doing anything that we're going to have to redo or undo. No, my question. no, it should not okay. have anything to do with that. So you can see along the toe of the slope on the bottom of the drawing here, there's a uh, perforated uh, drain pipe. And, oh, that's the existing conditions plan. Let me get to... Uh, the next page here, if I can, I don't think I can. This appears to be the only page I have, but in any case, um, it does show the proposed changes here. So this and, is really uh, just fencing and drainage. It, it really is, um, and the, you know, grassing over the infield, right. so. Um, How about any of the parking? The, the other concern I have with the parking is that the fencing, like the wood fencing around the parking, that little half circle there, like right literally here. Yeah. falling down, and you could drive over this that. This foot rail. Oh, yeah, that right. needs to be repaired. Yeah, that's a safety. Hazard. I mean, I think that's something that public works could address in house. Okay. I think we need to have a have that know, be part of this. A, a formal bid process for that. I mean, I think that's something that they could repair. Do you want me to ask Rudy about it? Yeah. You want to ask Rudy? Yeah, it's good. I'll just copy you. Okay. Say that's a it's in bad shape right there. And the parking is already not ideal, but you've got people trying to figure out that circle and how they're supposed to park in it. And then you've got that on top of it. Yeah. I'm ready for someone to just drive over the edge. And also Wait. the kids walk down that way too. You're out of the office. I'm sorry. You're out of the office. I'm trying to send you an email since you're out of the office. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in tomorrow. So I put the out of office in at yeah. five. Yeah. Um, so would you call yeah. it the handrail? I'd call that the like pedestrian walkway. I think it's like a, it's not a, it's really more on the parking. It's a split rail fence split at rail the fence. top, like at, at the, the cul de sac. I mean, at the cul de sac. I don't know what you mean. Yeah. We looked at it and they, they know what's an issue. I think that it just needs to be prioritized. Okay. I'd love for them to paint lines. Okay. <laughs> Well, just because it's a circle, so like yeah, you've never gone there. Oh, so yeah. nobody knows like oh, yeah. really like how to park. Or some people just like park along the edge, and the other people will pull in. And it's just, I mean, it's a mess. And if you got people leaving and coming and going, it's what would be the optimal configuration though? Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to look at it. But I think either. I think you would. But I would think it'd be something more like the sort of pinwheel. Yeah, shape. our engineer could just tell us in like yeah. ten minutes. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt. So I got to build a proper parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how, how many circle parking lots have you seen? <laughs> yeah, that's important. 
Get your yeah. summer interns to train doing the streets and lines down there. Yeah. <laughs> summer and practice at Bradford then before you do the yeah. open cross <laughs> logs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that all we have on this? The field update. That would be a good. Yeah, I just start. thought I'd share that with you. And then uh, we have pickleball update. So back to the Meadowcroft and the six pickleball courts. And I can share that with you too. I mean, um, Looks like let's uh, get back to where I was. Operating. Don't show the pretty multicolored picture. There we go. Stop that one makes there. me sad because we're not getting the multicolored picture. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to show that. I was just going to show the the plan really okay. quickly. Awesome. Um, which I swear is is up somewhere. It was up in Adobe, I think, on the second. Time. I think it was yeah. on another tab. I always know. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. I could have just switched tabs. That would have been smart. I didn't realize they were tabbed. Uh, and yeah. with the Adobe again. Awesome. And there you go. Ooh, Mike, you should. Ooh, oh, yeah. now I was on the right tab. There we go. All right. Back. Here we go. So, all I wanted to show you is just sort of a high level um, view of what is planned and, and what is being done and what is not being done. So, this would be the two existing uh, tennis court enclosure here. So this line down the center, which would be at the baseline of the courts, that will be installed, that six foot chain link fencing. There'll be an opening at both ends so that you could come in through the main gate and find your court, you know, wherever it is. Chase the ball that goes over the six feet. Well, yeah, I don't think yeah, that's going to happen a whole lot. Yeah, it's I, you'd have to try to do that. But so the fencing that runs along the sideline here, this is this was an ad alternate. This will not be installed. Um, we think it might be difficult for recess. Um, it was also pricey. And we wanted to keep it within budget. So the other we can add it in later, but the school could always be done later. About it, they use that area and it was a little bit limited. Yeah. It could easily be done later. But in any case, the, the important one is the baseline. That's yeah. where yeah. all the balls are really going to be going. It would drive you crazy if you were trying to play there. Um so there's that. And then the other add alternate we added was just a black coating, like um. It's not like a color coding or anything like that. It was just mainly to um, smooth out any ir irregularities and to cover up the existing tennis lines. Because if they go in there and they um, basically scrape those off, you're gonna, it's gonna leave marks and it's gonna leave irregularities in the surface. It's not gonna be good. So this will, this will be a good way to just eradicate those lines and then the white platform, uh, or sorry, we did platform today, pickleball lines will really pop on the courts and be very visible. So there will be no more tennis lines. We'll have permanent um, nets and posts. So these will stay in place all year and there'll be no more tennis. So this is all gonna happen as uh, Commissioner Ranny indicated earlier after school was out for the session again, so we don't, disrupt their uh, use during recess. And uh, we'll finally have some dedicated pickleball courts. So this is Lincoln's, Lincoln School's property during the school, eight to four, or what's the? Um, it's, they have, a, we have a lease with them. It's okay. their property. There's a long-term lease that the municipality operates, the court, the tennis courts and basketball courts as a park. Yeah, uh, but there's language in there that we have to get approval from them before any major changes. They have, um, you know, use of the courts during the school day, but it's really just during recess, yeah, which I think is hours. 11 to 1. Wait, what did we say? 11? The community is not allowed on these courts. Oh, that's in the park. Is that right? 11 to 1. There are signs oh. on the courts that say. Are 12 to 1? No, it might be 11 to I think it's 11 to 1 on school days. I took a picture of it. We've back and forth a lot on that. Okay. Okay. Kind of so the community is allowed on these courts yes. anytime except recess. Yes, which I know is weird. No, no, no. Lunch hour. No, that's fine. I think 
Yeah. Yeah. School days, yeah. 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 So then my only other question is when you. It's not going to be a problem. 11 o'clock. All, all those players are done by noon. Oh, yeah. So 11 is going to be. They're, yeah. they're not going to want to leave at 11, but that's okay. But the kids yeah. will come out and kick them out. Well, yeah. If, as long as it's well posted, I don't think that's going to be a problem. There are signs. It's already posted. Yeah. So people are used to it. Yeah, I hope. And then the permanent nets and posts. What's going to prevent the kids from destroying this? Nothing. During recess. Nothing. They're okay. teachers. Yeah. <laughs> They're teachers. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of creative play on those nets. Which, I mean, nets are easy to replace posts. Oh, yeah. I don't think they're going to hurt the yeah, posts. Probably not. They're not, though. Yeah. When I really. Used to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's okay. tennis nets. It's probably a little yeah, sturdier. They should do is teach these kids how to play pickle. They have oh, that's true. Yeah. Yes. That's oh. the hope that they will actually use them for pickle. Yeah, yeah. Right. Donate some equipment. This is recorded, right? It is. Good. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we got it. Yeah. I mean, and this they'll take it. I mean, the school district will take the gym teacher at Lincoln. I don't know who it is, but they'll take whatever. Do you want to take them? Do you want me to take them? Oh, what? I'm um, getting, getting them equipment. equipment. Yeah. I can probably get it at cost. Okay, well, yeah. Be there's a, actually like there's a foundation that does this. Oh, okay. I don't know that they donate to Mount Lebanon type school districts. We'll find out. We definitely donate to Mount Lebanon. We may not talk about it, but I can. But I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Which is, oh, we, 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 would they be willing to put any type? I mean, you could go to Gamma in Pittsburgh. Could we, could oh, yeah, put, yeah, yeah, we, we put, know a guy. So we yeah, put we the know a guy. sign up if they were to donate. Oh, you mean get a sign? I don't know. We put a Gamma if they, if they donate. I mean, I don't know if they would That's do it. But. Cool. Well, I don't know. What does the school do? Um, I, don't, I don't know that we'd want to put a sign up. Um, I, I don't think we would. And maybe not a sign, but maybe like a banner or a card or something you could put up like you do at the yeah, at, at, at that would still technically be a sign. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how it would work if you know because it's a municipal park, but it's school property, or you know, how that would exactly work, but um we don't put up signs in the park. Also it looked it was it would look like Emma bought it got the courts. Yeah, I mean you know, like well, I yeah, I think. Well, what if, I mean, in which case, let them research the research and make sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. We got a key, like a metal. Get them to give you bid. reports. So like they really only put the equipment in that. That had the sign of Like exactly. an outdoor, weatherproof, keyed bin to yeah, lock yeah. the paddles and balls in. And that's got the name on it. For the kids mm -hmm. or for general use? For the kids. For the kids. Yeah. And the school recess yeah. people have the key. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You're asking. That's it. That's getting vandalized. That's getting vandalized. Yeah. Your files are getting stolen. They're going to break in one yeah, way or the other. Yeah. Kids are. They're going to want to play. Yeah. 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 All right. You're asking for it. Or yeah. The, yeah. Like they bring asking. out like all the. You're asking to be re replacing yeah. this paddle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, teachers can do and pass them out then. Or not. Yeah, but like the gym teachers bring out like balls at recess. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. do the school has to that? Oh, they play kickball. Yeah, I mean, you got to not your, your equipment bag. I mean, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, yeah. yeah. You don't know that you need a game box the out there. Yeah. Exactly. Not our We got the courts there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got them courts. That's Hopefully, great. they like them. I think everyone is going to love them. I mean, yeah. six yeah, right. dedicated courts is huge. And it's like the point people too, you know, because yeah. people are always like, well, where can we go? Like, I don't know. But they'll put them aside. And how, if if they're, 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 they're lit too, right? I was going to say, is this lit? They are lit. Yeah. And they're, they're on like 10 o'clock or something. Like, what? Um, I want to say those are about 10, 10, yeah. 15. I think oh, the park is going to be a lot of people over in Australia. Yeah. There's a command that's going to be here. Yeah. It's it's going to fuel a big more of players. So we're going to need more courts. Ready? Uh, yeah. Really yep. against that. That's yeah. I mean, look at Cranberry. Yeah, Just unreal. Courts upon courts upon courts. They're going to invest in bubbles. They're going to bubble their courts now. Uh, yeah, and they they should, should bubble. Some ridiculous amount of money. Take one for it and then bubble it. There's like 200 people on the wait list. I mean, they're breaking things. Take clothes over the wait list. Like, Insurance money. 100 million. Sure. Surface. Do. Yeah. And do. Yeah. I, don't play, I, mean, I don't play. I don't go up there by the hurt. We're going to be the racket center, right? The racket and paddle center. That's what I just said. Just one court and then put a couple of balls in and bubble it. 
Should they do next? Well, they use like those arrows being no, just like everyone will say that. They've got some their usage is it's a little cheap. You're gonna be so good at it. So, we got their new business. Okay, all right, new business uh, is our last thing. Um, I was just gonna mention if anyone saw in the Mount Lebanon magazine, there's a little article very short uh, article about the, the field uh, allocation process. No. So check that out. It's in the one that's called, what's the title of that one? It's like the, it's like the municipalities. It's not the magazine. Yeah, but no, but like the, the cover is, has on it, like the, it's got the one, it's the one with like the budget and the, all the municipalities. Oh, so oh that, that, was that the like insert is the, uh, I, uh, I think it's a comprehensive annual yes. uh, financial report, oh. or we might also, it's issue. either the CAFR or the CAFR or just, yeah. Uh, it's know. that issue. Too many. It's like a, a picture of the town on the front, mm -hmm. but to check it out, I think it's in one of the first articles. David is quoted, John Grogan's quoted, and I'm quoted. So they've got a quote from each of us. It's very short, but it does give, it does do a little educating on how many fields there are, how the fact that they're not all owned by the same group and the process that has gone through to try to get people to agree to the usage of the methods. I mean, it's pretty good. Separate and separate like, entity. Like, is it its own business? No. It's, 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 it's the municipalities. municipalities of the municipalities. We fund it, yes. Public information no. office. Well, I was just thinking, like, when you talk about the yeah. proper names for fields and renaming fields or, or anything like this, I mean, you know, do we partner? Do we push that through social media? Do we push that through that? Organization to do that some communication. Yes, like, I mean, I always see like, hey, the shop turned over. I'm like, cool. But yeah. like, you know, for some of the initiatives that this team has or the broader, more broad, you could do that when, board, they, when the, the I think we should be thinking. We should do a little feature oh, sure. on the different yeah. fields and who, the, uh, who they're named after and why. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking yeah. when we were sitting yeah. here was, did okay. you know that Bradford is actually not that, or this is not this. It's not Bradford. Right. When we it's say John Dr. Field, right. Have you seen these plaques? Yeah. Mary Dixon was blank. You know, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's um, a great idea. We could absolutely do that. Does anyone uh, have any additional history that we wouldn't already know? That I would think that we have Mount Lebanon has a repository for the history about all the fields. Historical society, uh, uh, maybe historical society. They might. I I'll, mean, I'll I have the, the last sixteen years worth. I mean. <laughs> After the, before that, you need somebody to engage with people to get that information. Sure, yeah. there, you just gotta find them. If, like if there's, there's a rock at Bird Park, I've got to go pay attention the next time I'm there. Yeah, because I think I mean, if you don't that you that I've walked past a hundred at least. Like yeah. the same with, I mean Seymour, I know, and 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 Dixon, I know. Yeah, there's but, a lot of interesting. Uh, even prior to Seymour, it was called Wildcat. There's a lot of interesting history of that. I mean, that goes way back. We want signs for everything about all the history. We'll get there. That'd be really cool. Like a plaque that just sort of. We want everything. Sure. the whole sign. We can educate the community. And educate the community. How about a cool place we live? I mean, it's important. Yeah. Okay. So, a historical society would help us. Historic preservation board would help us. We don't have to figure it all out. Um, article. Requesting um, an article, making sure we get or several articles. And in, in conjunction with once this new signs go up, we know what we're going to name things. That'd be a good story. Um, any other new business announcements? Other than the meeting, our next meeting is not until September 7th, but there will be some work going on behind the scenes, I think, between now and then, for sure. Yeah, between the, the team's groups to work on the Urging yeah. the field census study is going to get done if it kills me before September 7th. We're going to finish it. September 7th? September 7th. Before flag football season, I have between cross and mm. so um, Could I get, could it take like two months maybe to get on public discussion? Could I pick the public discussion now? I know. Pressure, do you yeah, do yeah, audits yeah, before yeah, you make a sneak peek? That's because we we'll, like, could just talk for five minutes. About when okay. That appropriate date might be. For you, I just want to get it in yeah, people's minds before budget so we fund, you know, right. with that information. Okay. okay, anything else? There's a real quick question about the uh, comprehensive plan and the uh, information coming out of that. Yeah, does the sports and or the parks information does that trickle down other than through you being the liaison to it, or does that fed into the? I think there's still a survey phase. 
right? Um, the new surveys concluded Sunday. The second year, three or four. Yes, so they're compiling all that, and then there'll be more results. I think the don't we have some initial results from the first round survey yeah. on the Ascend Weibo site? So that's oh, so that's on that's the, the place where you want to get your information. information is it's it's but it's not like a specific means to there. funnel that into the particular boards that would work. Oh, like filtered. Yeah, down you're getting you're your, getting unfiltered information from citizens yeah, about yeah, yeah. their needs. Or um, I would months. think I once the document is I think done. The same thing yeah. with the Ascend Weibo. You can go and. You know, I think you can filter That's cool. to what you want. Okay. Um, like you can, that. people like add things in. So yeah. you go to the park and see what people are saying about that area. I mean, you probably won't, don't get everything. But you're saying the people on these boards aren't necessarily looking at that information. Sure. Right. Probably. So when it's, maybe it's when it's all done. The document is done. done. Yes. It would be yes. nice for them to like yeah. tag feedback. Like, oh, well, this is a blank, blank, and blank board would yeah. The benefit from this information. And I, I think some of the things that are coming out of it too are like they're telling us, like the liaisons, who it's, it's been kind of, you know, a, some different people what the surveys are saying and then kind of brainstorming, like, okay, where do they need to focus their attention? And like I said, I think it's it's very obvious that parks and sports in general, parks in general are, are near the top of that list. I would think they'll get quite quite a bit of attention. But yeah, like, I don't know, right? We can, I, yeah, I think there's got to be a, a link to share. On the, I think it's just the assembly book, right? Yeah. If you just go on that, I think yeah, most okay. of the stuff gets posted on there. Um, David, do we want to, since we, this board sort of is defunct as of what April 1st you said? That's when yeah. Should we add the last three board meeting dates for January, February, March, just so we all? Yeah, have them. I just looked sure. it up. It's January 4th. I oh, oh, like seven. pick them. Yeah. Or, and then just add. Mm -hmm. So the next meeting you have them down at the bottom and it would just be the rest. You want to do it tonight? It's just January 4th. If you do the first Thursday, is that what we usually do? Um, yeah. It's January 4th, February 1st, and March 7th. February 1st, March 7th. Year. Say that one more time. January. So adding to the list, it, it's a, a September 7th, October 5th, November 2nd. We skip December and then January 4th, February 1st, March 7th. Okay. Got it. These are all the first Thursdays of the month. Yeah. September I'll, the only exception. I'll still have to do another legal ad like in December for, yeah, to announce those. So, right. Years, but, we yeah, kind of I can. I can. Order. And then carrying on, yeah. on in April would have a whole other schedule. Yep. That would be a different, maybe night or yeah. whatever, week, day, time, whatever. Yes. That's, yeah. We would know our commitment at least. Yes, I I think that I don't I don't know we haven't we have we tossed around some possibilities of like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday meetings, either six or seven start time. We get kind of consistent, but because maybe Mondays and Fridays are a little harder for people, but. Uh, but the board can decide really with staff. I was pushing for earlier than eight because it's extra hard, I think, for staff people. But you know, look and see, look at the composition of the board and see what people want. Okay. Any other announcements? I guess just quickly, I'll share. Um, yes. I don't know if it's an announcement or just a little fun thing. Fun yeah. fact, yes. Um, the staff that typically it's department heads um, and staff office chiefs, but once a month, we also have the second in commands at that meeting as well. Um, and we uh, eat, we rotate like who does the presentation for the meeting or the staff topic as we call it. Um, so it was my turn for today it was our staff meetings are on uh, Thursday mornings. So we met at the new Platform Tennis Hut and uh, gave everybody a tour of the hut, gave them a little bit of history about Platform Tennis and introduced a lot of the staff folks to Platform. And uh, we concluded with a little optional quick, quickie, like 10 minute lesson on the courts if they wanted to learn um, from our tennis pro Hank Hughes. And uh, 
a former pro and current Mount Lebanon resident, Scott Kaler, who's ranked like 10th in the world, I think right now in platform tennis. So it was, uh, it was really a good, just good learning experience opportunity. And I think that's kind of the, the uh, object of the staff topics. We each learn something more about the other person's department. So it was cool. And the hut's beautiful. I don't know if you've, anyone has place but battle or I've been in there. Right. I don't, but my friends have also said it's quite nice. It's kind of gorgeous. A lot of good feedback from people yep. come from very the nice. Yeah. 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 And it also spurred like uh, uh Don Gavitt, who's the president of uh, MLPTA Mount Lebanon Platform Tennis Association. We had a back and forth and I was racking my brain trying to remember all the dates where you know we uh, we first built uh, courts three and four in 2008, and we named the uh, platform courts after Don's parents, uh, Robert and Barbara, I think. I think that's right. And then the bleachers. Uh, well, that be bleachers predated this yeah. naming. Um, I, I, I've forgotten already, even though I gave my presentation <laughs> this morning. Um, but we were trying to remember, like, were the original, when were the original two courts constructed? And and so anyway, just Don ended up doing like a quick history that, you know, we can now kind of keep. And so it's really just a lot of good things came out of it. Such a cool facility. Yeah. We, should, we should go on a tour sometimes. We'll give you a tour. We, can yeah, have, we sure. could have one of our meetings there. Although no, then I'd have to like have another legal announcement that we change venue or something. And you have to have the technology to... Free meeting like seven thirty, we can be there. We're working on that too, right? So, the yes. technology yep. again, trying to get the hut. Well, yeah, we might not need to beam that based on like our getting new TVs basically solved our problem. Oh, okay. So I was like, let's stick with this for now, and we were going to try to beam signal from the tennis center and then like put a repeater and then use the existing, but maybe maybe down the road. All right, we got what we need for now. You you have Ethernet. We uh we actually bought one of those little 5G T Mobile spots. Oh. It runs like 51 megabits per second or something crazy. It's pretty good download. And then we run a cat five into the TV and the outdoor TV is uh Wi-Fi. It works great. We don't do like if we don't offer Wi-Fi to the members or anything like that, because they'll just log everything down. Right. <laughs> so I mean it's 50 bucks versus 180 bucks, you know, and that's doesn't get used for a good portion of the year, so it's just money thrown away. Right, well, if that's it on the announcements, then we will adjourn at 9 14 p.m. Six minutes early. All done. Thanks, everybody. Good meeting. When's our next meeting?